Okay. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong one. I hit just go live, but there was actually a go live with guest or go live with friend. And I didn't see that one. So he should hopefully be getting the invite. Let me make sure it went out. Yeah, he's got it. Sorry, this time it's going to work because you can see there, there's a second. See right down there? There's a second side. How is everybody today? I thought I would use tan paper today. In a, here, you gotta feel this. Ooh, that's got some tooth to it. Mm -hmm. That's toothy paper. Rebecca is snowed in. Um, there he is. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can. How are you doing? I can hear you good. Excellent. I'm doing good. And you? I'm doing okay. Yeah. I. I okay. Uh, I. I just. I had so much fun last time we did this that I was like, I want to do this every week. But no, that's asking too much. Well, once. <laughs> <laughs> we can try. Yeah. It's fun. It it really is. It really is. You're really onto something because um, the first couple times we did it, when we did it on TikTok, um, yeah, it was it was very clunky for me. But I think last time, I think it kind of started to click, and uh, and I think that's the the thing with any art, you know, um, you do it enough, and you start to find why it's so cool, and uh, and I think that was last time for yeah. me. I think but, my my trajectory with any time I try something new, like the first time I often have beginner's luck. <laughs> and then I think I rule at it. I'm just a natural. And then the second time it's just a complete disaster. Yeah. And then I give up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds about right. Um, I, I probably against my better judgment. I thought I'd try tanned paper this time to see what happens. Ooh. And, uh, so I have that, but um, I have my ink and I'm ready to make a mess. Yeah. Oh, and, Let's and make again, a mess. I, I love little Scotty. Can you see a <laughs> on, on your screen? Oh my God, that's funny. <laughs> that is adorable. Uh, no, no, no likeness intended. No, 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 not the little red nose or anything. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. I, I was actually thinking that, that maybe uh, another time we, we should do it the other way around, where you force me to do your type of uh, photo-based portrait oh. in an hour and uh, you know, see if I make a fool of myself. <laughs> I'd love to do that. Yeah, let's do that next time. Let's do that. Excellent. I have a lot of colors today. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Donna gave me a color. She gave me, what is, where is it? Black it, cherry. Black cherry. Matches your pencil. Um, so Ooh. I might try that. She also gave me a, a glass dip pen to try, too. Ooh, yeah. But I think for now I'm going to start off slow with just black. And um, Just black. Yeah. Okay, I'll start up with uh, letting your viewers decide which color, I think. All right, everybody, what color should Kim work with? Mm. 
Can you open a Discord channel, someone asks. But you do have a Discord channel, don't yeah, you? Yeah, we do have a Discord channel, yeah. Me too. Yellow, yellow, pink, pink, red, yellow. All of the colors, Dave. <laughs> okay, let's... Let's uh, take some of the colors then. Let's take yellow and pink. Where is the pink? Where is the pink dipper? Oh, it's not. Hmm. I'm staring at it. I'm looking. Ooh, yeah, that's a. That's a difficult blob. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Uh, and there's a simple reason why it's difficult. Because you spread it out so far that it sort of becomes a pog. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Now let us see if yellow and pink goes well together. I would like to know if this would work with the question was, would this work with watercolors or diluted paint? I, I guess it would just as easily, it, right? It would work with anything. Yeah. Uh, that's the reality of it. Uh, if you have watercolor, you can uh, mix up the watercolor and then drip it and then dab it. And it will work beautifully. If you don't have any uh, wet drawing equipment or painting equipment or, at all, yeah. you can just make a scribble. Uh, close your eyes, make a scribble with your crayons or your pencil or whatever, and uh, go from there. Yeah, that's smart. Calling it now. Kim is going to make a dragon. <laughs> I didn't. Intend to make a dragon, but but challenge accepted. Let's see if maybe Did upside we... down shows a little better. Yeah, I'm staring at this, not seeing a thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want my advice for wh yeah. when that happens? There's two bits of advice. You know, if I wasn't on a live stream, I would just uh, accept the shame and the loss and toss it away. Toss and that away. feels good. But since you're on a live stream, that would be an intense amount of shame for you. <laughs> so I would uh, start by placing two eyes or three eyes, some random thing. And once you've placed the eyes, do the, the you know the cartoony round eyes with a dot? Oh yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then when those are placed, see what if uh, something comes up. So right. place the eyes first, and then you know, I, it, it won't be. I think uh, I, you I, won't I, do the Mona Lisa that way. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna try something really quick because I do see something. It's just it. It didn't look appealing to me, but let me see. Just to have some fun and just draw. Someone sees Godzilla in your blog. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, I think it is kind of a Godzilla ish kind of thing. I just don't remember 100%. What, oh my God, it's what, Godzilla. I just don't remember 100% <laughs> what Godzilla no, it's, was. Uh, like. It's Mewtwo. Yeah. It's definitely the eyes of Mewtwo. So, uh, the cha your channel is growing very quickly. Yeah. Can I tell the, the, the viewers about my secret weapon? 
<laughs> wouldn't be I, a secret anymore, but yeah, sure. Yeah, my secret weapon is that Scott has been nagging me for half a year or so that I should get on YouTube and and get, basically giving me given me the recipe to make my YouTube grow, which was to uh, post ev ev all of my most viewed TikTok videos over on YouTube and just line them up and uh, do one per day. And the thing is, I've been in one of my bipolar depressions the last half a year, and I really hate watching my old videos back. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. And then Scott said, no, 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 no. Let me do it. Got my a login on my account and did all the work for me. So if I'm growing on YouTube, it's all thanks to the oh, incredible I kindness of, of Scott Christian well, Sava. Thank you, Kim. But which honestly, is kind of mind blowing because I, I I hate saying yes to to help with things that I feel I should be doing myself. But I just said, damn it, Scott probably knows better. You I know that I know that wasn't easy, but I mean honestly, it's really not a big deal. You built up an audience of over a million followers on TikTok, you've got thousands of videos. It's just oh, a yeah. matter of just just posting them. So it's all your talent. That's why that you're getting the following. It's just all your talent. But um it's all my secret talent at uh, getting <laughs> other artists to do the work for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think it's a pattern right originally. Yeah. I'm gonna take <laughs> I'm gonna take the shame and I'm gonna get rid of. <laughs> I'm just not seeing it. Um, yeah, get rid of the shame. Yeah. Yeah, it just yeah, I just wasn't seeing what to do with the rest of it. But, but that is actually a very uh, good point to to mention is that a lot of people when they try to do these ink monsters. They get super precious about each ink blot, and yeah. they stare at it and stare at it. And it has to be perfect, and the whole point of the exercise is that it's not going to be perfect. No, exactly. The whole point is to do something impulsive, and if you stare at it for half an hour, then it's not impulsive anymore. Yeah, uh, you're right. Uh, and, and, and it's also a whatever you do, you train your brain to get better at. It. And if you sit staring, waiting for the perfect image, you're oh, training your brain to not see images. Can you to, guys to, see to... the werewolf in this one? I turned it from this way to this way and instantly saw like a werewolf. I don't think I could do it justice, but... Um... I think you can. I think I can. I think you can. I think you can. I think you can. <laughs> to quote the poet. But yeah, the the, the um, learning that the feeling of just say, staring at it for ten seconds and then saying, "No, I'm not going to do this," and yeah. toss it away. That's a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because. There, there is a point in the drawing press, uh, process where you should get pressured, where yeah. you should, where the adrenaline should. <laughs> someone asked, well, first of all, of course you're allowed to, it's art, but someone was asking if you're allowed to draw two things in one ink monster. Oh, did we lose Kim? Yeah, he stopped moving. Oh, okay. <coughs> oh, 
There he is. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Uh, all the, the programs on my phone just, just stopped, stopped working. Someone was asking if you can do if it's if it's okay to do two ink monsters in one splotch. Of course it is. Yeah. Uh, it just takes more time. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um, the reasons why I do these as ink monsters is just that the, the, the idea of the monster is so loose and malleable yeah. that it can become anything. So, and I've stretched the definition of monster on these. I've done, I've done a plain fox. Because apparently foxes are monsters, <laughs> uh, which I can I can argue for that. Um, and I've done I've done Aristotle because philosophers definitely are monsters. <laughs> and I, you know, it can be anything as long as you define it. In a specific way, anything can be a monster. It's true. It's true. I mean, the, the, the in Norse mythology, uh, the first being ever is the giant Ymir. And then Odin and his brothers uh, gang up on Ymir and, and uh, kill him and fashion the world from Ymir's body. And that basically means that the world is definitely a monster. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. It is definitely monstrous sometimes, mm. too. But, but if, uh, I mean, um, Leonardo da Vinci wrote about uh, some very similar idea to ink monsters in his diaries. Uh, he called it his something like his uh, uh, endless imagination machine. Or, oh, or really? Something like that. Yeah, and it was his ability to look at uh, uh, the, the water damage on the wall or the, the splotches on his the palette and see landscapes and battle scenes and, uh, and yet see the inspiration for elements of his art, art in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I don't think he claimed to have invented it, because I think these types of uh, uh, games are much older than him. But uh, the problem with doing it in Leonardo's way, where the, the splotches, the, the random patterns can be anything in the world, is then it becomes hard to do it on a regular basis because some of the things you're going to see in the ink dot are going to be too complicated to draw in one day or in 10 days or in a month even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so by limiting it to being one monster, Per day, I can, I can make a monster even on my worst. Well, I think that's such an amazing thing that you. I don't want to say that you stumbled upon, but it, it's it's kind of become your thing. You you know you're synonymous with it, and um, yeah, I think it's just such a wonderful exercise that you could do for eternity and be surprised each time. Um, Absolutely. I'm going to do another one because this one was okay. <laughs> but, You're faster than me today. Uh, That's, well, you, I, I'm not even faster though so much as I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm giving up quicker. <laughs> You're faster at giving up. So that, that, yeah. You take right, the gonna, wins you can get. I'm gonna try Donna's. Do I have to shake it, Donna? No, or? no, no. But just be careful. It's the whole. It's not a. 
Oh. It's just a big tub of it's ink. A big tub of ink, yes. Jeez. All right, how am I supposed to get this ink onto that paper? Do I just tip it? Uh, I, I don't, don't want to have it spill. It's gonna spill if you do. Why don't you just put some on a paper towel and or and then just dab it? Just dab it with. Yeah. Okay, let's try it. Do they need special paper to do ink months or, or just use normal paper? I think Kim's Kim's been seen just using um, copy paper, right? Uh, it, I, for my uh, ink monsters, I don't use copy paper, but in practicing, I've used a ton of copy paper. Yeah. But, but yeah. I use reg regular drawing paper, so uh, right now, actually right now I'm using a watercolor paper because I'm out of my regular paper. Okay. But I tend to not use watercolor paper because it's so much more expensive. I'm using and, really expensive Arches 100% cotton <laughs> paper. And you're tossing it away. And I'm tossing them away. It's like $2 a it, sheet it, or something. <laughs> so extravagant. I, I, You know, I, I bought it. You know, you buy paper like a decade ago and you think you're going to do something and then you don't. And then it's just <laughs> sitting there. And I'm like, why don't I just use this nice paper? It's just going to sit there forever. When am I ever going to use it? So yeah, um, just just make excuses for your new extravagant YouTube famous habit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just I'm just burning dollar bills now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you could just be drawing the ink monsters on the dollar bills. Yeah. <laughs> what dear? Oh. <laughs> The, the paper I regularly use is uh, Fabriano, which is a great uh, manufacturer of paper. But uh, it's their line called Draw, which is a, just a regular drawing paper made for students. A and I use the 200 grams. Okay, paper. okay. No, it's, sorry, uh, Fabriano Start, which is a uh, study uh, student paper. Uh, student grade paper, but it's a fantastic quality. It's very good. And it's not too expensive. And I also use another called um, Figura Draw, which is slightly thinner, uh, so it's uh, 180 grams, but uh, but uh, even cheaper and very very good. Mm. And you you'll get some wobbling uh, if you pour too much ink on them, but you'll get that with any paper. Yeah, yeah, this stuff is wobbly right now. Mm. And this is, okay. uh, you know, right now I'm using some uh, Fabriano Studio watercolor hot Fab press paper. Is Fabriano the, the stuff that I got? The... Yes, Fabriano is the one we got. In yeah, when we went to Italy, we got I got a Fabriano watercolor sketchbook. It was very nice. Yeah. Because I, I, I tried uh, finding Fabriano and both brands in the States, and that's hard to find. Yeah, they're, they're not out here. That's why I say, yeah. I, yeah. So, so it, so it uh, is, uh, it, it seems like a, 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 a portion of the art supply market is very regional. Yeah, yeah. And Fabriano is, you know, it is a, very prestige uh, European or uh, Italian brand. Yeah. Uh, we we have a lot of um, subscribers in India and um, mm. they um, they can't get a lot of the art supplies that, that we get too and, and vice versa. All right, I'm still not seeing anything yeah. with this, so I'm going to try adding some black on top of it. <laughs> I just either I'm being very unlucky today or I'm just not seeing the stuff. Or maybe I should try the blowing one next time. You're making your uh, ink blocks very large. 
Yeah, maybe. And that that is uh, a problem because then you have less space to shape it into something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Gus and Kim, have any of you seen Doctor Who? I've seen Doctor Who. I love Doctor Who. The, the new ones, I, I had never seen the, the... I think I've tried to see the old ones. I, I, I just fell instantly asleep. I grew up on the old one. Tom Baker. Ooh. So is it something you sh you can go back to, or is it permanently dated? No, no, no. I mean, I'm sure they're they're very, all the Doctor Who's are cheesy. Oh yeah, I think that's kind of part of the charm. But um, that that was what I grew up on. I was never like a huge fan, but that you know when it would come on, I would watch it. You know, but um, it was a. Um, quirky thing to watch in the 70s yeah I, I you know when skipping school as a kid I, I sat home and watched Star Trek the original series and yeah. that's still my favorite Star Trek yeah uh, so 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 it's not that I think that, that Doctor Who is too old and cheesy because old and cheesy yeah <laughs> But, but but I really liked the. Um, it was my wife who started me watching the, the new series with, uh, written by Stephen Moffat, and, and that is, yeah, brilliantly written at times and very fun. Yeah. And very cheesy. Everybody keeps saying I need to watch the, um, the Van Gogh episode. Yeah. That's fun. It's very hard for me. It's mm. a, yeah. So I, I enjoy that. Well, I've blown through about uh, six dollars worth of paper now already, so <laughs> <laughs> I better I better find something in this one. Poor Donna's cringing back there. I, <laughs> I'm still on my first, which is you're just being economical. I'm being economical. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have. The puns to be wasting watercolor paper like <laughs> I think I, I can think always a lot of um, hmm? uh, it, just go ahead. I was saying I can always hop in my Bentley over to the uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I, I think a lot of the questions we get all the time about equipment is sort of, uh, um, I, I think you say this as well, but it's sort of a, a upside down question because for most artists starting out when you're training, you shouldn't really aim at getting the best equipment. Yeah. You should get uh, cheap equipment and try it out and see how it goes. And then gradually, when you find something you like, you start buying one expensive thing and two expensive things, and suddenly you're addicted to exactly the equipment that you like. Yeah. And yeah. you know, some parts I really want the right thing. So, for instance, there's tons of different brands of ink that are great, but I use talents. India ink, and whenever I use some other ink, the consistency is just a little bit wrong. And, and it's okay, but I hate it. <laughs> and that's something you 
you that kind of uh, judgment that kind of de- decision is not something you're that is even interesting when you're starting out yeah because another artist might like their ink slightly thicker or slightly thinner and, and all has its has its uses yeah so, it's you know, it's a preference it's it's like taste in music or taste in uh, clothing you know hmm. you're you're going to like the the texture of something or the you know that's why people, you know, they say, should I, should I start off with this, with watercolor? Should I start off with colored pencil? Should I, I'm like, it's, you, you got to try it to see if that's something that clicks with you. Yeah. And, and the very best, if you're starting out, the very best equipment to start with is the tools you have in your house. Yeah whatever they be. And then the second best are the cheapest tools you can find that might start to look like what you want to do. Yeah. So if yeah. you want to do inking, get a pen. If you like a pen, get a brush pen. If you like the brush pen, you know, try to get a bottle of ink. Yeah. I, also, I, nothing beats just it. learning to draw every day. Yeah, definitely. What are Kim's favorite things to draw with? Uh, you were asked, what are your favorite things to draw with? So for me, uh, it's the ink and brush. Uh, the very first time I actually. I'm going to expose everything I said about equipment as a lie <laughs> right now. Because when I was about 12 or 13 years old, I read Wizard magazine. I remember that and magazine. Somewhere in Wizard uh, was, I believe it was, Uh, yeah, I think I, it, uh, it must have been an Eric Larson's, uh, or not Eric Larson's, but it, it, someone had a uh, uh, drawing column and uh, listed equipment and listed the Windsor Newton Series 7 as the brush you should use. Mm. And you should draw on Bristol board. So I saved up money. I went to the art store here in Bergen and I got a Winter and Newton Series 7 that is really expensive. And I got some Bristol board, which is also very expensive. Yeah. And uh, uh, I fell in love instantly. <laughs> uh, and uh, for many, many years, I used the, uh, the Winter and Newton Series 7 as my main brush, which also that? made... I just, just hear that, hear terrible. that, kids. Go out and buy the best thing you can. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, it made me more careful with the inking. So yeah. I couldn't do stuff like this because yeah. I'm messing up my brushes daily. So I buy, uh, you know, uh, decent, normal quality watercolor brushes. Most yeah. of them synthetic because. They are good enough, and I don't feel bad when I destroy them. Yeah. I feel really bad when I destroy a Winsor Newton Series 7. But I do destroy them in the end. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not really a fan of brushes. I just don't treat them well. I don't clean them. And... Um... I shouldn't be around expensive. When Donna bought me for Christmas, she bought me <laughs> some like, what were they, $25 a brush? I'm not even gonna tell you. They were like, they're still sitting here. Hold on. Ah! 
Um, they're still sitting there. No, that's artist loft. Hold on. Yeah, Da Vinci brushes. And they're, but look at them. They didn't hold their, I tried them once and they look like that. Because you, know. you have to, you have to treat them well. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, you have to condition them and shape them. I don't have time for that. I'll take a synthetic <laughs> brush. <laughs> you know? Don't you ever condition your brushes. Uh, that's, that's a part of it. That if you have a Winston Newton Series 7 or any other expensive Kalinsky uh, saber hair brush, then yeah, do wash them with shampoo and condition them uh, and have your wife laugh at you while yeah. you do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh hey I just came in could someone give me a summary of what's going on what's going on is that I Kim Diaz Horn am succeeding at drawing a dragon <laughs> from an ink block and uh, Scott Kristen Sala is paling at his third ink block I or are you just, it's torturous <laughs> It's torturous. <laughs> I'm like, gosh. I, I no, You know what? It's the paper. That's what, I'm going to blame the paper on this one. You blame the paper. Blame I'm everything. I'm going back to the old paper. Darn it. Arches. By the way, I I didn't know if you were failing or not because I can't see your ink book because of all the comments. Oh, no. Trust me. Your instincts were right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I tried the blowing technique. I tried the dabbing technique. I tried the blue ink. I tried smaller. I tried bigger. I'm going to drink more tea. Drink more tea. That's the, it's uh, not enough tea. That's the problem. It has to be. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm out of this stuff. Hold on. I think this is my last of it. It's so funny because the the succubus one, I was like, oh, I totally see something. The uh, the non-binary orc was just kind of just. I just, what I just have to uh, uh, interrupt you. Because right now I can hear my son standing outside my window watching this YouTube stream <laughs> loudly on his phone. <laughs> Still watching my, and laughing at me. That's so funny. <laughs> his son is outside watching the YouTube. <laughs> I love it. Go away, go oh, away. Okay. They'll be welcome from house. Well, it's official, Kim. I have no talent. <laughs> you can do ink monsters with watercolors. Does it have to be ink? I was curious because I have not gotten into ink before. No, yeah, um, yeah, we we answered that earlier, which is yes, you could use any medium. Yeah, any medium. You could use pencils. You could use watercolors. You could use anything. So instead of you know uh, being depressed from your total lack of skill, yeah, <laughs> why don't you try to do a watercolor blotch and, and see how that goes, where you can actually manipulate it with uh, with the uh, the water and, and Make it flow. And, you know, I'm gonna. Just... I'm gonna beat this, Kim. <laughs> I'm, gonna... <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to. Why don't you go run back to your watercolor, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm. I'm gonna finish this one, and then I'm gonna do a watercolor. Yeah. One. I'm gonna. I'm gonna uh, take your advice, and I'm gonna draw <laughs> the big eyes on each side of it. <laughs> <laughs> and call it a uh, Fernurgle Loggle. Fernurgle Loggle, that's great. great. When, when I teach classes and I have students, stuff, which I don't do that much anymore, 
But I always uh, say to to my students that uh, uh, you should always, uh, you know, if I give you advice, that then if you succeed, then I take credit, <laughs> and if, if you uh, fail, then it's all your fault. Yeah. <laughs> You did. You didn't take the advice correctly. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Or uh, actually, more importantly, if they take the advice correctly and still end up sucking, <laughs> it's on them. Yeah. Which, which is kind of harsh, but 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 it's true. It's it, is, it is. It is. Yeah. You you you, your teacher never. <laughs> actually knows what you should do. They know what they would have done. Because <laughs> it always works out perfectly for us too, you know, so. Oh, yeah. We've seen three examples of that on your stream just today. Yeah. <laughs> four. I have four, four, four sheets yeah. of complete masterpieces that um I will be throwing out because um I can I can do that. I'm going to regret being so cocky and teasing you about <laughs> all of these when, when oh, we do the You'll rue the day, Kim. You'll <laughs> yeah, rue the day. <laughs> I will, I will. But yeah, I, I would definitely love to do a stream where we did. Worked in watercolors and worked from photos and maybe work from the same photo and see how it compares in the end. Yeah, when was the last time you did watercolors? Uh, 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 ooh, uh, for Mother's Day for my wife. Uh, Sun, one or two Sundays ago. Oh, really? That's yeah. How was it? Did you did you enjoy it or awful, awful? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. I, 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 I it went okay. Uh, I do struggle. I did try a couple of things. I, I generally work with uh, my, my drawing pad flat, but I actually elevated it so you get some of the, the watercolor. Know, gathering at the bottom, uh, you know, so, so you get some of that uh, uh, watercolor look where the color intensity is a bit, little bit, bit uh, stronger wherever all the paint, has, the wet paint has gathered. Yeah, so I like trying that out, but you know, I'm. I'm watercolor curious, but I, I've never been. <laughs> yeah, to quote the poet, I've never been oh. curious. <laughs> this one is uh, doing great, Scott. This is this one already has personality. It, <laughs> yeah, I had I to work for it. it. I, I had to work quickly because honestly, the eyes originally look like breasts. So I had to like quickly <laughs> make sure that <laughs> before the algorithm censors up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, those are eyes. Those are eyes. I promise you. Yeah, someone said it feels like I, like Scott's working against the ink rather than with it. Yeah, I've been fighting <laughs> it today. That's a... I was so happy and so confident after the last one. This is great. I want to do this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and after this, Kim never heard from me again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, I think after this, I think we, it's best to do it at your turf next time. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 you know. Oh, for, for my sake as well. I, yeah, I, I want to. You want to try something a little different. I was going to say, like, yeah. this is good for me because it gets me out of just the rhythm of doing the same thing over and over again. And I could see that that would be the same for you, too. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, and that actually, uh, that was one thing that I did struggle with a lot this fall and this uh, winter was that I started to notice that, uh, as you said, that that I've become sort of associated with uh, ink monsters, and that's my thing. Yeah. And the minute something is my thing, then I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh no, no, I, I I want to do something new. I want to do something special. I want. Yeah. But then I sort of gradually came to terms with, yeah, it, it can be my thing, and I can do other stuff as well. Exactly. Exactly. It doesn't I mean, hurt I, to have a thing. I like to go back and forth. Gosh, just you know, like on a weekly basis, I've been doing watercolor. I've been doing markers and colored pencils. I've been doing, um, I haven't done gouache in a few weeks, but uh, I, I just, you know, what do I feel like working? I've been using these um, uh, acrylic pens and, and uh, you know, working on like a 45 record. Like, so I just, I've been really kind of just letting both, you can call it the muse or you could just call it boredom. Just kind of just guide me. <laughs> That is the the, the, um, the tenth muse. It's called <laughs> boredom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's been very fun watching. Uh, that's one of the fun things about watching your videos is that you always try things with this, this, uh, this. Uh, Spirit of adventure that is admirable. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I um, I, I really got to say I've been enjoying finding my voice, um, with these, and um, I, I feel like uh, I could really kind of just be me a little more, which is which is nice. Definitely. I think, you know, I think from when we first started following each other, I think I watched you sort of find yourself yeah. in the stuff. Because you did a lot of great stuff uh, already when, when we started following each other. But, but now you do Scott stuff. Yeah, I, 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 it's really been a journey of self-discovery, you know, um, and, and, and I'm, I'm uh, you know, I, I've, I've been able to kind of um, understand, yeah, I, I guess that's what that means. I just, I've been able to understand myself as I've been doing this, which has been really, really nice. And, you know, it's the first time as an artist, I, I don't have to sell something. I think I mentioned this last time. I don't have to sell something to a client or an investor or something. I could just be me and, yeah. and just say, this is who I am. This is what I, what I like. This is, you know, I messed up. I can make a video. And, and those are the ones that do the best, honestly, are the ones where I mess up. And, uh, and so it's like, you know, I could, just be me. Uh, mistakes yeah. and all. That's a fantastic feeling. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's one of the, the reasons why being an artist is... Whether you're a professional or an amateur or, or just do it for fun or professionally, it, it is that you can... 
you can continuously discover what it's like to be you and do it in a sort of con concrete form and, and yeah look back at the results as well yeah i think um what's what's wonderful is you know w with my art you can see i'm not one of those artists who um, found their style early on and stuck with it. My art style has changed every decade. I tried different mediums, you know, um, I tried different, uh, styles and, and I'm constantly evolving, but I like to think that that's a reflection of me as a human being too, is, you know, I, I don't want to be the same person I was at 25. I want to be more enlightened. I want to be more accepting. I want to, you know, and so I think as my, as I grow, my art grows and I like to be able to see, it's almost like a visual representation of, of, you know, what's going on in my head and in my soul, you know? <laughs> Definitely. And it, it is, Uh, just psychologically, uh, the sense of mastery is one of the most powerful uh, emotions or uh, states you can have. Yeah. Uh, and and with art, you're always in the this state of mastery where, where you're trying to master something new. You might get and then you've already jumped onto the next thing. Yeah. And at the same time, you are sort of hopefully trying to master yourself as well. Yeah. So, 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 and I do know some artists who, you know, got success with their comic book, with their comic strip, and simply don't have time to master anything anymore. Yeah. And so they just have to keep drawing that one style again and again and again and some of them are okay with it and uh, but a lot of them feel this sort of uh, uh or have expressed this sort of uh, a longing for i wish i could learn to draw again yeah <laughs> because i'm just drawing all the time uh, uh, so that that is you know the incredible privilege of uh, getting some success and recognition on a social media platform is that that allows you, hopefully, to to be yourself and work on yourself and, and actually change. Yeah, in front I, of the audience. I sometimes feel that my account is like a variety show. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, and today's guest is, you know, and, and it's, and it's kind of fun. It is. All right. This guy, this little guy is actually kind of cute. So, um, I think that's yeah. a good thing. That one is marvelous. I think this is, I think this is your best. Ink monster, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. He's very. He's very holistic. <laughs> <laughs> he is. I, I, I mean, he sort of stands. Um, he is himself. Yeah, yeah. With most of your other ink monsters, you see, could see that this part is cool. This part is a little bit sloppy. This part. Is, this worked, this didn't work. Yeah. And it comes together sort of like um, it's a bit of a Frankenstein monster. Yeah, yeah. While this one is certainly a ugly, but it's not a Frankenstein monster. It's no. a, this was how they were birthed. <laughs> they, they came out of their mother or their eggs like this. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Well, it only took, uh, like I said, six dollars in Arch's paper. <laughs> <laughs> but it was oh. worth it. 
you can you can invoice me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and usually on these streams, I, I have drawn a lot of monsters when we get to the 40 minute mark, but I'm still on my first one. That's great, though. Yeah. If someone challenged me today, can you do two monsters with one ink blot, or with, or can you do two ink blots on one paper? And I couldn't with the ink blot I had already made, but I could make some random ink blots for the background and find a yeti in the. Background. Oh, I love it. It's a dragon, the classic matchup: dragon and yeti. <laughs> They're looking to be friends. The dragon doesn't look too friendly. But the Yeti is trying. Can love Yetis, prevail. Yetis are the golden retrievers of the uh, monster world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure they're not the golden retrievers, they're the pale retrievers. <laughs> yeah. What's that saying? If not friend, then why friend shaped? <laughs> I haven't heard that before, but, but I love it. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, we, we've been asked if you do live streams at all. Uh, I haven't uh, done uh, much live streaming. I don't think I've done any live streaming this year without you. But okay. I am definitely going to do more live streams, and I'm going to do more live streams on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I am going to bring back my uh, weekly art request show, where that's called Free Art Show, uh, and bring it back for a season three. And um, then once a week, I will try to draw your requests, and then scan them, and release them for free use. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, and I'm hoping to to start that again pretty quickly. Uh, but but, but the, the main reason why I haven't done uh, much live streaming this year is simply because I've been in one of these bipolar depressions, and uh, Going live without a safety net is scary. So, yeah. so you are my safety net right now. So. Hey, anytime. <laughs> and if you want to, so when I go live and I invite you, um, it goes yeah. up on my channel. Like the video will be um, on my channel for people to watch. Uh, yeah. If you'd like, next time we can go live on your channel. And yeah. You can invite me, and that way people will be able to watch it. Like if they missed, they can watch the whole thing on your channel later. Excellent. We can do and that. Then I can embarrass you on your channel, and uh... <laughs> yeah, that, as long as we just keep embarrassing each other, that's yeah, <laughs> that's what friends are for. Exactly. If it's friend shaped, embarrassed. <laughs> I think this one is coming up well, and I like that my um, my, my uh, yeti has this tiny little Tintin nose. <laughs> I try to keep that. I know. I don't know if any of you can hear, but our dog is snoring so loudly <laughs> behind us. <laughs> I couldn't hear that. I think I'm done. But, like, part of me is wondering, like, I kind of want to do draw like a little border, um, but or should I just leave it? 
Yeah, do uh, either do uh, a little border, a little shadow, or, or even just some ink blocks, like, like some random spatter. Oh, spatter. Uh, yeah. uh, something, because you need something to make it go from being just sketch to looking like a finished piece. Yeah. And, and a little border would... Lovely you know, I, I did that with the uh, the succubus where I kind of just did like a little yeah. color kind of thing, and I and I liked that. So I'm just um, yeah. Let's see here. I'm going to pick a color. You guys are being asked what your tips are for new artists who are struggling. Tips for new artists who are struggling. Um, mine is always draw everything every day. That is my tip, um, which, you know, I'm doing a series on that, but Kim, you have one? Yeah, I sort of, um, I did a, uh, when I was trying to make a podcast, I did a podcast, uh, episode about how to start at art because that rhymes. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, I broke it down into, I think I broke it down into three different phases. One of the first is play. So the first thing you should do when you're stuck in my book is play. To to doodle, to, to draw something that is intentionally not good. Uh, to, you know, do uh, these cones. Uh, Back in the day when we had landlines, you would always have a, a book with all the phone numbers next to your landline. Oh, yeah, the phone and books, that yeah. Book would always have phone book scribbles in it. Oh, really? Yeah. And, you know, do those kinds of playful things mess around. And the next step is study. When you find something that you like, you start studying it and you try to find out why you like it, how to yeah. use it, how to get better at it. And you start watching YouTube videos, you start practicing, you start uh, uh, going to life drawing classes, you start uh, uh, trying out different, you know, making color charts and making all, you know, I've done hundreds on hundreds of papers full of just lines trying out straight lines straight lines straight lines straight lines they can thin line they can thin line yeah. again and again and again and the study can be really boring but that can also lead to the sense of mastery and then then in the end you you uh, you apply it and you try to make finished works when you play, you don't have to make a finished work. When you study, you shouldn't make a finished work. Yeah. But then you apply it and see how far you've gone. And then you do these three things again and again in any order. Play, study, apply. Play, study, apply. Apply, yeah. play, study. Again and again. And just that's the rhythm. And sometimes it will it will suck. And Maybe if you have drawn for a long time and you feel you're not getting better, maybe play around with sculpture. Maybe write a song. Yeah. Maybe take a dance class. And that type of creative play can actually help you push beyond the problems you had in your drawing. Yeah. That's great advice. Um, several people have said that uh, you're getting lots of compliments on your nails. Thank you. I need to redo them there. A bit. Oh, and I need to see which numbered monster so Kim, was 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 that the nail equivalent of oh this old dress? Oh I've you know that 
<laughs> your response was, oh, thank you. I need to redo them. It, it sounded like the nail equivalent of, oh, this old dress? Oh, I just kind of threw it on. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> Definitely. All, this, all these old nails. <laughs> Oh, these old nails sound like a, a, a fantastic uh, horror short story. Oh, yeah. Or a country song. <laughs> or a country song. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I'll, I'll write a country song called These Old Nails. Does art help with mental health? Uh, the question is, does art help with mental health? Yeah, so, so I think... Uh, I think this is kind of a difficult question because uh, yes and no. For me, I've always looked at myself um, and uh, I've looked at myself as an artist uh, and art has been a part of my identity, which means that when I started discovering uh, that I had depressions and was bipolar, uh, I didn't want to let go of the, the the hypomanic periods because they were really, really creative. So, so every time I started getting hypomanic, I started working on so many great projects and I worked myself half to death mm. and I obsessed over the art until I had worked you know many days without sleep and then I crashed and fell into depression and then I blamed myself because I couldn't make the art yeah and that was a really unhealthy way of doing art and doing life and then art was really tied to my bipolar uh, symptoms. I was making my bipolar worse with art. Okay. And then when I started picking out these rhythms, I started um, putting in more strict guidelines for you know, when I start noticing a hypomanic period coming, I have to cut down on the art. I have to go out and exercise. I had to stop working in the evenings, never work in the evenings when I have a hypermanic period because then okay. I won't sleep at night. Um, and then gradually I found a place where I can use the art to help me with my mental health because we talked about the mastery. Mastery is, the feeling of mastery is crucial for mental health. Because you feel like you've progressed, you've learned something, you've become something slightly new. Yeah. And for me, doing the Daily Ink Monsters, doing other art projects is a way of feeling that mastery. And having a tiny daily dose of mastery, that helps. Yeah. Gives you that, that, that dopamine, you think, or... The dopamine helps, uh, uh, but not just the dopamine. Um, because if I'm to guess what happened when I didn't have control of my uh, of my uh, um, hypomanic period, is that I was always chasing the dopamine. Okay. And that's not good. Uh, the question is, what do you do when you have nothing in your mind to draw? Um, for me, it is to <laughs> throw the paper away, Donna says. Um, <laughs> for me, it is, I like to journal. So I will go somewhere and I will have an adventure, you know, whether it's go to the zoo or, um, the, you know, like whatever local places that you can go to and just journal. Um, it's half writing and half art. So that's my answer for that. Kim? That's a very good answer. I, I've certainly done that a lot myself. But, but what I do is I do these ink monsters, but I don't 
draw a friend-shaped duo like this one. Yeah. I don't know why I called it friend-shaped duo, but I was trying to, to uh, come up with a name as I was talking about mental health, and that's all that came out. But I you know when I have absolutely nothing in my head, no inspiration, and everything is dark and bleak, I do one ink monster per day still, and they look, they, they make Scott's monster look like the Mona Lisa. <laughs> And, and that's okay because I I am making something. I'm keeping my hand warm. Yeah. So that when inspiration comes back, I'm ready. Yeah, you're prepared. Inspiration won't be there always. You know, some days it will be hard. Yeah. I always uh, think of. Uh... Because I, I go through this where I just go, I just, I'm not happy with my art. I'm not happy with anything I'm doing. Um, and then I just, I always keep doing the uh, the Dory from uh, Finding Nemo. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming, you know? And I just do that. And I just, just keep drawing. Just keep drawing. And it yeah. helps. Definitely. And there there are days and weeks and months and even years where just keep swimming is the best you can do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and again, going back to the, the, the study and the play, um, both study and play are things you can do when you don't know what to draw, yeah. And you, but but then you have to sort of manage. If you're going to play, then then you have to manage the mindset of this is just going to be fun and silly, and I'm going to be done in two minutes. Yeah. If you're uh, going to study, if you're going to study, that then uh, uh, you need to have another type of mindset you need to realize that you're not going to make something good while studying but you can actually make something you can actually just say i'm going to draw for 10 minutes yeah from a book i'm just going to copy that book for 10 minutes every day yeah 30 minutes every day and that is going to help you uh, and teach you things, even when you don't think you're learning anything, when the inspiration comes back, you will have grown as an artist. That's true. That's true. And that, that's one of the major problems I see in a lot of young artists is they they, they show their studies and they say, hey, they're not, they're not good, they're just studies. Well, that's the point. Yeah. They are not good. They are just studies. That's what they are, studies. I think so many so many artists think that everything they do is supposed to be a, a work of art that you're going to hang up in a gallery. And, oh, yeah. and I think, at least for me, 90% of the stuff that I do is just me making art. That 1% yeah. is the one piece where I go, I'm going to keep that piece. That's the piece that I'm going to you know, if I ever have a gallery show, I'll put into a gallery. But the rest of it is just like, you know, I, I did a video. It's like, you know, you got to do a hundred pieces of art to find the one that you like. And, yeah. um, and I think that is true. And, and so many young artists just think that, you know, I don't know. I mean, could you imagine being a musician and thinking this, this is a hit. I'm going to write another song. This is a hit. <laughs> another song. This is a hit. You know, that's that's why albums have B-sides. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and there are even, there are some records where, where you can say to almost every song, that, oh, this is a hit. But you yeah. can't listen to them too often because every song is a hit. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so you're almost finished with yours. Yes. So I'll try to do one more and do try to do one just as stupid as simple as I do on my worst days and okay. see if I can finish before yours. Okay, I'm done. So, oh, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I waited too long. <laughs> shame, shame. I'll finish quickly. We will do an eye here. This is the perfect place for an eye. And then the other eye must be up here. That was great, great advice, though. Yeah, just put some eyes on each side of it, and, and it just really kind of came together, which is funny. Uh, <laughs> I I never would um no oh, isn't the Bridgman the one that I have? I don't know. Um hold on, let me see. So the, the George Bridgman and that's the books are fantastic. They are yeah. really great and they're really weird. Yeah. Uh, I think me, we maybe talked about this uh, on a live on TikTok a long time ago, but, but do you know the story about behind uh, the Bridgman books? No, I don't. So Bridgman was a art teacher in New York in the uh, first half of uh, last century. And he had these huge classes. Uh, uh, he had daytime classes and nighttime classes, and there were like 40 students in each class. Uh, and a lot of people went. To uh, our uh, bridge with classes. So went Frank Fest. Wow. Uh, Will Eisner wow. went. Um, Andrew Loomis was one of his students. Um, and, you know, really, really influential. But Bridgman himself was this tiny little round man. And so in order to draw in front of his book, he had a huge piece of paper uh, that, that sort of uh, hung uh, at an angle down from the on a board from the ceiling. Okay. And he would uh, paint with a big pencil on a uh, long stick <laughs> up in the ceiling above him. Really? Yeah. And, and he didn't have time to actually sit down and write a uh, drawing book because he was teaching classes day and night, day and night, day and night. So the, the drawing books are collections of his ceiling drawings and some student drawings and perhaps uh, some snippets of his original writing and then student uh, um, notes on his writing. All right, I'm, I've pulled so, out a couple of them now. Yeah. And so you're saying these, these were... These are ceiling drawings, yes. Really? I, I would guess that uh, the ones with the, the numbers and the, the, uh, the ones with are really broken down are either student drawings or, or uh, drawings from that did probably a few drawings for the book. Most of the drawings are collections from the leftovers from his class. Interesting. That's a great story. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've had these books. How many have I had these books? Saying you guys have similar desks because there's paint everywhere. <laughs> yeah, there's paint everywhere on both of them. All right. It's not saying when the published date of this book was, but I probably got it I, in I, the 80s. 
That's four dollars yeah, ninety five cents. I got the exact same ones from yeah. my father. In the oh, nice. <laughs> And they, they are magnificent, and I sort of grew up to draw from them. And then I uh, I got uh, John Buscema's How to Draw the Marvel Way book, <laughs> which is also fantastic, yeah. but exactly the same way as uh, with, or not exactly, but same way as with the uh, Bridgman books. The text is a bit weird, because it's Stan Lee writing the text, and he doesn't yeah. know anything about drawing. But but um, once I bought Waybook, I went back and noticed Bushema's anatomy looks like Bridgman. And yeah. the reason is, of course, he was a poor New York kid. He went to Bridgman's classes. That was the only uh, uh, art education he got, I think. Yeah. That's crazy. Just there asking, Kim, why the long face in the drawing? <laughs> <laughs> so I have named my little guy a cackling Fergalberry. Cackling Fergalberry? Yep, a cackling Fergalberry. Of course it is. Yeah. And um I you know it's funny because I I always it's it's become like a running joke with my art on my videos um is that I I always change my mind on the background color. I just, I start with a color, I go, maybe this. And I go, oh God, I hate that. And I go over it. But I think I like the fact that you can see the previous colors underneath. You know, you can see the pink under the blue. And, oh yeah, uh, that's a good look. I think, yeah, I think those are, it's unintentional. It's, it's, it's annoying, but I think it just becomes a part of the look. And when you said, See the pink under the blue. Maybe I'll mess up this drawing. Maybe what? Maybe I'll mess up this drawing and make him. Oh, pink. nice. And I think that works. Yeah, pink and blue are it's are. <laughs> they don't work for everything. They remind me of cotton candy, <laughs> but uh, they do. It's it's uh, they do remind me of the eighties too. Oh yeah, this is a good look. <laughs> then I actually need to. And perhaps the talking about the, the, the thing in the background, it's something in the background, Just a little shade. If I was working with watercolor now, this would be easier. Yeah, I would. <laughs> As, uh, I, earlier I said that the last piece I would do watercolor afterwards, but I don't think we have time for that today. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll just have to do this again. Like I said, we'll do it on your channel. Yes, definitely. And this is number. 
23. And his name is Lying George. Because I lied about the watercolor. <laughs> and we're talking about George. Bridgman. Bridgman. That's great. Lying Georgie. Well, I'm so glad we had a chance to do this again. And um, yeah, this has been great. They're really just chill and fun. And I, we still need to make our way out to your neck of the woods so you could take me troll hunting. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm going to bring my sketchbook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do I need to make sure the I, I, reference is paid? <laughs> Donna wants to know if she needs to make sure our my life insurance is paid before I go. Definitely. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> oh gosh. I I don't think uh, Norway is a very traditionally it's not a very dangerous country. <laughs> traditionally. Until you're hunting trolls. Sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. I think we'll we'll uh, call it. Yeah, it's, let let's see your dragon. Oh, that's amazing. Friend shaped duo. <laughs> I love that. I like how, I like how my art becomes more grotesque and monstery when I'm doing, and yours becomes softer and more colorful. When, when yeah, we're <laughs> we're a bad influence on each other. Yeah, exactly. You got to go wash all that candy cane. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, thanks again, uh, Kim. I love doing this with you. And like I said, um, let's let's do this often if you're okay with it. And and I'm very okay with that. Yeah. Okay, and then. Um, yeah, uh, let me know when you're going to start going live, if you're going to do it regularly here, and I'll make a post uh, on my channel as well to let everybody know. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for this. Uh, and congratulations on your best ink monster. Yes. <laughs> it just, thank, that is thank actually you. an important lesson. You just needed the, the, the three other sucky ones. Four. Four. Poor, the, uh, the but, poor, but the, the see, fifteen of them. It, it look, it was the 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 the, the Godzilla's in there somewhere. Um, the the werewolf Ooh, fish thing that has potential. Yeah, the the blob that never went anywhere, <laughs> <laughs> and the dragon thingy, whatever. But the thing that they all have in common is the arch is paper. So remember, the lesson is. It's the paper, not it's you. It's the paper. <laughs> I, I have to say that that, that uh, on my top ten list of greatest H.P. Lovecraft stories ever, the blob that never went anywhere <laughs> doesn't make the list. He was he was just a just an introverted blob. <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Right. This was just. Uh, incredibly fun, Scott. Yeah, uh, and really thank was. you so much. No, thank you, man. I'll see you soon. And bye, see everybody. Soon. Goodbye.